one zambia one nation a warm welcome to the tv2 main news let's look at stories making headlines this evening one suspect has been arrested in connection with the cutting down of power pole lines in Dudumwenze in southern province Also coming up in the news, Deputy Secretary to Cabinet Christopher Mpunga has been involved in a road accident involving three vehicles in Livingston, Southern Province. And coming up in foreign news, four Turkish nationals have been rescued a week after being abducted by gunmen in Nigeria's western state of Kwara. With the news in detail, my name is Chiwan Zana Chalwe. One suspect has been arrested in connection with the cutting down of power line poles in Dudumwenze in southern province. Home Affairs Minister Stephen Kampiongo has confirmed further directing police to be alert and ensure all public installations are protected. Mr. Kampiongo, di Mr. Kampiongo's directive comes after unknown people allegedly cut down the poles which are part of the Rural Electrification Authority rear Rural Electrification Connectivity Project. He was speaking today at a press briefing in Shuangandu District, Muchinga Province. He has added that government still remains committed to take development to do Dumwenze despite some disgruntled people trying to frustrate the efforts. And I'm happy that uh, the police command in Southern Province under Commissioner Likashi uh, doing everything possible and so far uh, one suspect has been apprehended and the investigations have since been instituted to ensure that uh, um, the, we get to the bottom of this matter. So we still remain committed as government and I think like His Excellency uh, did assure the people of Southern Province that uh, regardless of what transpired, uh, the development shall continue to be taken to the, the people in that area. Meanwhile, some traditional leaders in southern province have strongly condemned the cutting down of poles for the 63-kilometer Dundumwenze power line. Chief Macha says it was unfortunate that some people have resorted to vandalizing such important infrastructure meant to benefit them. Speaking when southern province minister Edify Hamkale called at his palace, Chief Macha has called on the police to conduct investigations and arrest those responsible. And speaking earlier at his palace, Chief Chikanta told Dr. Hamkale that he has embarked on community sensitizations on the need to safeguard and protect public infrastructure. Chief Chikanta has praised government for the numerous developmental projects being implemented in his chiefdom. Meanwhile, Dr. Hamkale, who has also visited the site where the poles were cut down, has appealed to the traditional leaders to engage the subjects on the need to protect public infrastructure. Deputy Secretary to Cabinet Christopher Mvunga has been involved in a road accident involving three vehicles in Livingston, Southern Province. The accident happened last night around 21 hours in the Mosotunia National Park Department of National Parks and Wildlife Southern Region Senior Wildlife Warden Lewis Daka, who was at the accident scene, has confirmed to ZNBC News in Livingston. Mr. Daka has explained that one of the three vehicles hit into an elephant while the other two careered off the road as their drivers tried to avoid the vehicle which had crashed into the animal. He has advised motorists to observe speed limit signs in the Mosotunia National Park, especially at night, to avoid accidents. And Jonathan Maila, a PF security wing member, has told ZNBC News that he was escorting Mr. Mvunga from Livingston Town when the accident happened. Mr. Maila has said Mr. Mvunga was rushed to hospital after sustaining minor injuries. By broadcast time, Southern Province Police Commissioner Diamond Likashi had said he had not yet received a report while police spokesperson Esther Katongo could not be reached for comment. There's one vehicle which is, I can say two vehicles which are extens extensively damaged. Uh, extensively damaged. Yeah, the, there's a story that there was an elephant which uh, could have uh, led to this accident. But again, 
what I can say, in the park we have speed limits. If you drive here, we have speed limits that you go at a certain speed. But if people are driving beyond the speed required in the park, we'll have these accidents. Uh, what happened? Uh, we, uh, we were escorting the Honorable from town, uh, Vamfunga, going to the hotel. As we are going, the couch was in front, uh, bypassed the, the, the other vehicle, which was coming from, from uh, Vic Falls. So I just said the bang, boom. Then the other car for the Honorable went into the bush. So I also, I, I also, I, I also followed. I also avoided to hit that car. I went, I, I went into, into the bush. Erango has erupted in Osaka's Ballaston area on land, which is earmarked for construction of a hospital. A resident, Joseph Mwanga, is claiming ownership of a 3.1 hectares piece of land. But Area Councillor Kelvin Kaunda has told ZMBC News that the land belongs to government and the health post has already been constructed. Dr. Stalungu has the details in this report. This is the piece of land at the center of this story. One of the residents is claiming ownership despite the health force already built on this land. It has emerged that a resident, Joseph Mwanga, has started demarcating this land in Lusaka's Barstone area, claiming he owns it. Mr. Mwanga is claiming the piece of land is his asset after some transaction with another private individual. This land is the but I've got a problem with the area councillor, Kelvin Kaunda, who also claims to say no land in Niyake. But the title, Nianga, and he has seen the title, they've even verified the Minister of Lands, they found out that the title, Nianga. However, there are corrective measures already in place, and those who have bought plots will not build, their structures have been demolished. I Joseph Mwanga, I think three years ago. Uh, then to us today, I said Tampo Kura Pafest, I decided to buy. But Nanibam Wang, Niba Kazin Wang. So even Pedico plot. Oh, much one the Kura Kwapa, so a Kunani Kambo Kura, Panadi de Tama, Soshina de Tere, Kwadia Pana, Nama Broco, three thousand. So it was some of your two, Paisa Makada, Vasenda, Nanyama Broco, Nanina. Area councillor Kelvin Kaunda says the land belongs to government, what with the health post already constructed. Mr. Kaunda says there are now plans to construct a hospital here. So when that land was acquired, we, it, it was given to the Ministry of Health and the PP, private uh, public partnership, hence the clinic that is built there. So the whole idea is we now have a clinic and we're in, in discussion with Ministry of Health over the possibility of expanding that health post into a hospital. Because as you can see, there's a huge community around there. And how else shall we be, shall we allow a situation where every piece of land must be aligned into plots? Where are we going to get social, social amenities in, in future? Because even the guy who wants to sell uh, that place uh, I mean, uh, into plots, when they fall sick, you still need I mean, the services of uh, health care. The Office Longo, CNBC News in Lusaka. You're watching the main news on ZNBC TV 2 still to come. After this break, former Mansa Batteries workers call for extension of purchase period for houses in Spark Compound. This plus other news. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We continue with the rest of the news. Sitting tenants in houses for the defunct Mansa Batteries factory have appealed to government to reconsider the purchase period of the houses Chairperson for the tenants of Spark Compound in Mansa, Rapula Province, Yoram Chansa, says the October 15, 2019 deadline for them to buy the houses is not attainable. Mr. Chansa has told ZNBC News that the tenants would want the purchase period to be extended from six months to three years. Details in this report. It's been years since Mansa Battery Factory closed, but its existence gave birth to its battery brand name to Spark Compound. Sitting tenants in this compound have been given offer letters and up to six months to purchase these houses. They are thankful to President Ed Galungu for that development, but have a plea to make concerning the payment period. As sitting tenants for spark houses, 
wish to extend our sincere gratitude and appreciation to His Excellency, the Republican President, for his timely intervention into our, our issue of offer letters to compel the Office of the Administrator General to issue us the offer letters to purchase the houses. The period of six months given to the sitting tenants to purchase the houses is too short. The six months expires on 15th October 2019, failure to which they would be evicted and the offer to be opened to the public. Most tenants in Spark compound are widowed, jobless, and some of the homes child-headed. Janet Ndoa is one of the widows. Lelo, ichwa nderi lirakofie, pamo mukatika mayandaye nea ya fwewe kashiba muna muina musipaki, tulia wachi nkumba wili, muna muina muli kwa nafufuwa muka mfuilwa, muli kwa nawa kuchata baba mba nito nangufia imo, nafufuwa nafufuwa shumwa po nito nangufia imo, nawa nawe ngi mayandomo muine. But to a sheko kutila tuwe nga tuwosha kwa mutengo wa mayanda pa kutila ti Na ifowe ne tukwate kukwata kwa honga cha kutila wosha mutengo Tu wala kwa te shuko la kwa tushite kwa mayanda ya pa kwa tuwika lemo na kusunga mwuru pa alwesu Pa mwangawana Another issue arising is that of the purchase prices of the houses pegged at 65,000 kwacha Up to 120,000 kwacha And the state of some of them In their innocence these children are enjoying their child's play for now but do not know what their parents are going through to keep their spark in this compound. Ahmed Mwapes, NBC News, Spark Compound in Mansa. Petauke District in Eastern Province has recorded 68 teenage pregnancies among pupils in various schools between January and June this year alone. This is one of the revelations from a forum for Africa Women Educationalists Zambia Faweza Stakeholders Engagement Meeting on ending child marriages and teen pregnancies held in Petauke. But Acting Provincial Education Officer Matthias Chunga is hopeful some of these girls will get back to school through government's re -entry policy. Zanis reports. In a bid to contribute to the reduction of teenage pregnancies and child marriages in the country, the Forum for African Women Educationalists in Zambia, Faweza, is sponsoring teen mothers by giving them scholarships to go back to school through the government re-entry policy in Petauke District of Eastern Province. About 200 girls from 10 schools dotted around Petauke have benefited from the project which has bought close to 1 million kwacha and is scattering for their school fees, uniform and other basic needs. One of the greatest achievements really is that um, we have managed to re-enter you know, 200 girls who had dropped out of the, the school system. Initially we had planned to uh, just re-enter 100 girls but uh, due to the reduced fees by the Ministry of General Education we have managed to you know, a double the number because after re-entering them, we are also giving them support so that they are able to buy, you know, uniforms, no books, and also uh, the paying school fees. And the Ministry of General Education in the province says it is happy with the project as it has given an opportunity to teen mothers who are struggling to pay school fees to go back to school. And to us as a province, this is a, a very big plus because we have been struggling uh, with the issue of uh, pregnancies and the uh, dropping out of school by our girls. And therefore, as government, we need uh, a lot of help in that area so that uh, more girls could be uh, brought out of marriages and taken back to school. As a district, we had only entered 68 girls as getting pregnant in a number of schools, but those are not out of school. The beneficiaries of the project have their own testimonies to tell. With all these initiatives aimed at curbing child marriages and teen pregnancies in the country, it is the duty of every well-meaning citizen of Zambia to join the fight in order to achieve the goal and vision of having a nation where females and males have equitable access to education at all levels in order for them to participate and benefit equally from national development. Naomi Mwimba, 
reporting for Zanis in Petaoke District of Eastern Province. That item takes us to our second break and coming up after this set of commercials, National Choral Music Awards launched. Plus other news, stay tuned. Welcome back. This is TV2 Main News. We continue with the rest of the news. Now, construction of roads in Zanimone area in Katua constituency has started under phase three of the L400 project. Road Development Agency RDA Communications and Corporate Affairs Director Masuzi Blovu says two kilometers of roads will be worked on. Here's a report. The site of new road construction works is what residents of the Limoni area did not expect. However, a change of scenario will in a few months hit this part of Katuba constituency. This development has brought excitement among area residents. The works are under the L400 Phase 3 project. We used to have challenges where like, um, like cars will knock off maybe very late. We used to have challenges using the, the graveyard uh, lot. Road Development Agency, Communications and Corporate Affairs Director, Masuzo Ndlovu, is confident the works will be undertaken within the set period. Ms. Ndlovu says two kilometers of roads will be worked on. As part of the implementation of um, the L400 Phase 3, where we are um, expected to work on approximately about 116 kilometers of roads in Osaka, uh, Zanimone area is one of those areas we are working on. Um, Zanimone West, um, we are working on a two-kilometer uh, stretch of roads in that particular area. In addition to that, we are also working on roads um, which are at gravel uh, level. So we have uh, AVIC International that um, is working on the two kilometer uh, stretch and then we also have our regional office that is working on uh, the roads around, uh, the gravel roads around. For Chimalata, ZNBC News, Lusaka. The National Arts Council has launched the first ever National Choral Music and Award Competition, which is aimed at enhancing arts in the country. Community choirs from different Christian denominations will compete at provincial level to qualify to the National Choral Music Festival to be held in Lusaka. Martha Banda reports. This is the first of its kind, a choral music festival for community choirs in Kawe. Ten choirs from different Christian denominations have participated and no group wants to be left out to represent Central Province. Kawe District Administrative Officer Brave Mazua has officially launched this event. This is on behalf of the Provincial Minister Sidney Mishanga. I want to commend National Arts Council of Zambia working with the Minister of National Guidance and the Religious Affairs, this is actually the way it should be. When we are talking about Christendom, we are talking about unity in Christ. And Goro Music Festival chairperson Inuk Chiwati says the event will be held annually. It's not one-off. It's an annual event. In fact, by August, what we are doing is after this the 7th and 8th of September Koro Festival in Lusaka. We are going around now to do workshops. And the organizing team has a word to the stakeholders. We hope sponsors will come on board. Uh, we hope uh, we are talking to a few sponsors. We hope they'll come on board because we'll be ferrying close to 1,000 artists from across the country. So to do that, we need the support of different partners and we hope that we can uh, get that support. Those participating have appreciated this initiative, which has shown unity among different denominations. Finally. After the singing competition, it is time for the judges to sort their case who will qualify to the final round. Martha Banazer, NBC News, Kawa Central Province. 
we take our final break. Stay tuned. <laughs> 